if I want my glutes to get bigger, do I need to be having bands? Do I, should I not use them? Like, give me that whole picture of saying, okay, Brett, I want my butt bigger. Do all I have to do is hip thrust? Do I need to add anything else? What are adductors? Complete that whole picture about what am I looking at anatomy wise? And then what implications do I have for training? First of all, the glute max has upper and lower subdivisions. And some people will even say there's the, you know, the iliac fibers, the sacral fibers, and the coccygeal fibers. Yep. They might even separate the glute max between three subdivisions, but definitely an upper and lower. And then the glute med has multiple subdivisions. And the glute min, to maximally develop them, you're going to do combine a lot of different actions. There's two studies, one looking at the glute, glute size of Olympic weightlifters. And it shows that their glute max is larger than control sub than sedentary yep. subjects, but their glute med and min are not. Ah, Meaning squats do not grow your glute medium in. Also, the Plotkin study showed that squats and hip thrusts, neither one of them grew your glute medius and minimus. If you want to grow your glute med and min, you should treat it like a, any other muscle and, and train it dynamically through a full range of motion. And there's uh, one guy, this chasm, pointed out that we're all doing abduction straight out to the side. Yep. You really should look at the pelvic shape and kind of go in the plane of the glute medius. Mm. which is diagonal at 30 degrees. If you look at how the pelvis is shaped and how the glute medius, you should kick out. The problem is it's really hard for people to get that right. Yeah. You have a nice way of showing it in a in like an educa instructional video. You look overhead and you tell them, turn this foot in and then drive back. But it's really hard. People, they end up bending over. Yep. And then they're involving the glute max more. So it's, it's really hard. And then do their yeah. foot go in front or in back? And then they end up at... So... I have ways of teaching it, but basically, for sometimes when it gets when people keep screwing up, I like, just go straight out to the side. Yeah, and and in so, but but because the glute med and men have multiple subdivisions, you probably should do different angles of abduction. Yeah, um, you should go straight out to the side. You should go at a thirty degree angle back. You should also do maybe seated hip abduction straight up. Mm -hmm. Uh, might develop the poster heads more, but also on the seated hip abduction machine, bridge up, do them bridged and do them leaning forward. Because leaning yeah. forward for the glute max, bridged up, you could put blocks like yoga blocks underneath you, or just maintain the bridge position for the glute med. Okay, what about glute max? You're going to get the most bang for your buck with hip extension. Um, hip extension exercises take them through the most range of motion. But now you start talking about how to put them together the most comprehensive program. I know in 10 years, especially if I team up with you and we start doing studies using this MRI stuff, but God, the, we have a lot of questions that remain. So right now, my optimal program, you know, the scientific studies we have to guide us are few. Yeah, We've got, you know, Kubo from 2019 showing deeper squats are better than shallow squats. But for that hip, just... For glute, for max, glute growth. max growth. But that yep. just looked at knee angle. They were probably... Hinging over and yeah, they were probably no. The beginners doing the sh oh, shallow squats vertical, were probably right. staying vertical. Yeah, and we don't have a study looking at super deep squats versus parallel. I think parallel would either be more effective or same. I don't think you need to go past parallel for glute growth. There's two studies on quads showing you deeper is not necessary. Uh, that Kubo study showed yep. same quad growth, but it showed greater adductor and glute growth going deep. And then we so that's the the study that people cling to about um, glutes being worked more in the stretch. Right. There's also an unpublished study that should, I, I don't know why it's not published yet, but Mao, uh, so in kickbacks grow more glute in the stretch position, but it's a straight leg kickback, mm. kind of weird. Um, who does straight leg kickbacks? Uh, you're not stretching it the most. You're not. Yeah, yeah. And, you're, uh, and, they, and they only went to neutral. They didn't go into hip hyperextension. Yep. So that doesn't have a lot of ecological validity with like how we do things in the field. So the best, anyone who's scientific right now, who trains people in real life and works with people and then also tries to incorporate the science, all right? This is what a reasonably, because you get these crazy, in every aspect of social, like every field, every, there's these politics, you look at anything, even in your world, more of the physiology and performance world, you'll get these coaches saying this way and this way. Yeah. You'll get people saying, just train glutes in the stretch position. Every muscle grows best from the stretch position. 
But that's a fascinating area. I have every study on it categorized into the folders. We, the verdict is not out on every exercise, and it depends how if you're a beginner or trained, mm -hmm. and how long is long enough. But what that what that whole category of research has not looked at is com combining them into a pro like basically what you can recover from. Because it might be that if you just could do one set a week, what would be the best thing to do? Maybe it'd be a set of walking lunges to failure. Yeah, yeah. All right. If you can do two sets. Now, what if you have all the time in the world and you don't mind doing whatever it takes? Well, then I would say train three days a week at least. But what if, what if, what if you could do hip thrusts every day? You'd probably get some people developing overuse injuries. But my point is yep. you could recover from that. Would that be more effective than training long muscle lengths twice a week? Yes, it wouldn't be as efficient, but or possibly wouldn't be as efficient, but you could recover from way more. What if you don't create any muscle damage after a while and you just stimulate hypertrophy and you can expedite the rate at which muscle, new muscle is laid down? We don't know. There's a lot of these questions we don't know yet. So right now, train the glutes three days a week and follow the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is something I came up with to illustrate this concept. When you're doing vertical exercise, those are the most demanding on the central nervous system. Well, it's funny because if you've seen the research on that, we really don't have a lot of evidence that it's more demanding on the central nervous system. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold my tongue, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I don't, we need to cut, we need re evidence of that because people know what it means. My it, vertical exercise, you're meaning squats, things squats, like that, right? Squats, deadlifts, lunges, step ups, Bulgarian up splits, and down. squats, yep. skaters, squats, pistol squats, good mornings, and all their variations. Yep. Those are the vertical exercise. The horizontal are hip thrusts, glute bridges, you know, your single leg hip thrusts, um, your, back extensions, 45 degree hypers, your kickbacks. Yep. But within those, there's, this is what makes it so complicated. You can make exercise, you can make things more knee dominant or more hip dominant, even kickbacks. What if you did kneeling kickbacks? Yeah. Then you almost, it's it becomes like a step up. So <laughs> I'm talking about it an is. upright kickback, yeah, yeah. you know, so, um, and then a, a, a back extension off a of GHD is horizontal. That's pure horizontal. 45 is halfway between, but we call it horizontal because right. it works the squeeze position more than the stretch. Yeah. Those exercises do not beat you up. In fact, after you've done them for a while, they don't beat you up much at all. They don't create nearly as much muscle damage. So those can be done more frequently, frequently and with more volume. And then lateral exercises, um, those are like penalty-free volume because you never do too much. Those are going to work your more of your glute medius and stuff. If you lean forward... Yes, you're going to work more glute max, but they don't beat you up. We just do, you know, two to six sets at the end of a, depending on someone's goals, typically at the end of the workout. But if someone really wants to grow their upper glutes, I might say, do start with abdo. I mean, think about it. If you're really wanting to grow your upper glutes, begin with a frontal plane abduction movement and maybe end with one. Yep. So then you do the rule of thirds you do around. So, and then here's another simple, simple system. Three times a week, pick one exercise from four categories. The first category is your thrust bridge, and this could be in any order. The second is your squat lunge. And when I say squat lunge, it means split squat, step up, single right. leg leg yep. press. Um, and then you pick a hinge. And the hinge, this is where it's kind of, it could be vertical, like an RDL. It mm -hmm. could be like a 45 degree hyper. It could be a reverse hyper, but it's more straight leggedy hip extension. And then pick a an abduction movement. The abduction could be frontal plane. It could be horizontal plane leaning forward. Uh, it could be hip external rotation still. So I call it abduction, like lateral rotary. So yep. you do your vertical, your horizontal, your lateral rotary, but pick an abduction, but also include an abduction. There aren't that many hip external rotation exercises. We do two of them. The cable cuff where you spin, yep. those are hard to master. They're hard to teach. But anyway, when you do that system, you will fully develop your glute max and glute med and min. The f you because when if you do you pick it, one from each four of those four, that's how you do it. Do it develop. three times a week. Three times Don't a week. do the same exercise every time. That's lots boring. of variation to make sure yeah. you, if there is an effect of range of motion, if there is an effect on activation, yes. that you're covering all your bases. And it's more fun. And that's yeah. when 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 I see people be like, just do RDLs. Do you imagine RDL? These girls train three times a week. First of all, you can't recover from doing squats and RDLs three yeah. times a week with intensity, with, with sufficient effort, but also, um, yeah, it's boring and it's, 
you you better be throwing in single leg RDLs that are not as taxing on the low back. Yeah. So what I found is you cannot do too much. These guys that are telling people, here's a here's a science based glute workout. They don't train women because I'm telling you, most of them train three days a week. They train lower body three days a week. These programs would crush people, yeah. would absolutely crush these women. I get carried away sometimes. So I don't do drop sets anymore. I don't do these crazy burnouts. I don't do crazy supersets. I'm yeah. not trying, I don't even, I even do lower reps now than I used to because we used to get carried away. I even used to do like sumo deadlifts with the deadlift bar and touch and go. Oh, that's oh, like oh. these girls can. I had girls doing 315 yeah. back in San Diego. Ashley got 19 reps. Dominique yeah. got 11 reps. Like, because touch and go, you can yeah, bounce that yeah, bar yeah. up. You can move. And everyone's cheering you on. Cool. You did something good. And then you're sore for like a yeah, week, a month. You can't duplicate that for a month. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're so beat down. And that's yeah. what I mean. So maybe it's muscle damage. Maybe it's yeah. like damage to to fascia, to discs, yep. something Chris Beardsley pointed out to me. When you do a conventional deadlift, you're doing a concentric lift, right? Yep. But what happens to the erectors? You, li you line up in the arch. Yep. You go to pull, the hips shoot up a little, the back rounds a little bit, you pull it up. The Before the bar left the ground, the erectors went into an east. You're activating yep. it. It went into an eccentric. So that can create more damage, more yeah. uh, something about the spine when you really do squats to failure, deadlifts to failure, those beach ups. So you need a good mix within those categories, within the, the squat lunge category. Some should be bilateral, some should be unilateral, some should be more quad dominant, some should be more hip dominant, meaning you can do a high bar squat with the feet elevated, but that's gonna be more quad. You can also do a low bar, Vertical shin, box squat, sitting back, that's more hip dominant. And then that, so you want to have variety within those. With the deadlifts, you want to do, sometimes you might do a conventional sumo deadlift, sometimes an RDR or, or stiff leg deadlift, but sometimes single leg variations, single leg, and even good mornings. You can do good single leg good mornings off the Smith machine. You can get good at good mornings too. People say they're dangerous, yeah, yeah. but that's because they don't start off light and work their way up. Good mornings are good variations to do, but the hinge variations should mix between deadlift and good mornings, and then also 45s and reverse hypers and back extensions. And then the abduction should be blended between uh, frontal and transverse plane, and there's so many abduction movements. There's yeah, yeah. sideline hip raises, extra range sideline hip raises. My favorite are glute medius hip thrusts and glute medius kickbacks. Um, you can Google those, but um, but my, but basically, then the hip thrust variations should blend between, you could do double leg, you could do single leg and B stance, but mostly double leg, but vary them between barbell, Smith machine, and plate loaded devices. But also, you're getting plenty of work. In this system, you're getting plenty of stretch position work. So with the hip thrust, it doesn't always have to be emphasizing mm, full range right. or you can emphasize the lockout in a few different ways. We do a lot of pauses at the top. We do a lot of bar plus band where you connect the bar to bands, makes the lockout even harder. And you can do pulses where you're just doing the top range of motion. Yep. If you only did hip thrusts and that was all you ever did, then you should probably do some bottom bottom uh, pauses, right. bottom range of mo ways to make the bottom hard. But you get those when you do the lunges, the squats, the RDLs. RDLs and this is the sure. best system I've come up with. It's the most scientific way to train the glutes, as we know right now. Any reasonable person would say that, <laughs> um, because if you said to, uh, if you said to like a bro, okay, if you put two inches on your glutes in the next few months, yeah, you think they train it one day a week? No one would train it one day a week. Yeah, you train it a few times a week, but you got to recover from it, and you can't get carried away. In fact, a lot of times when I train my girls. If I have them do reverse lunges off the Smith machine or the lever squat, the plate loaded squat, and they do two hard sets, I'm like, done. Sometimes one hard set, I'm like, just be done. You set a PR, I'm like, you're gonna be sore from that. And sometimes they're like, coach, I'm, I was so sore. Thank God I only did one hard set. <laughs> That's something no one knows to do anymore. They don't, they always just do three to four sets. Yeah. Sometimes one and two sets is fine as well. You gotta be able to recover. And if you don't recover, then what happens is, this happens in my gym a lot, 
typically on Fridays. And which sucks is because Friday, if you train Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you have an extra recovery day. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to be fresh on Friday, train hard, because you got two days to recover. So optimally, that would be your day to push hard. But sometimes they're like, coach, I pushed myself hard on Monday, Wednesday. I am beat down. So what they do is they do a short muscle length day <laughs> or like a, they, that's when they film their, their influencer workouts. And they right. did, I'm like, you didn't even do that workout, but that got the <laughs> most likes. So they do variety. They do their yeah. foo-foo wimpy movements that pe the, the men arguably so they get pissed at. That's when they do the, just a, a, some kickbacks, some abductions, some light bands and bands and stuff. And then they, they do that on Friday. They rest Saturday and Sunday and come back Monday and they crush it yeah. because they did a wimpy workout. But that's auto-regulation. That's how they periodize. But ideally, you wouldn't, they wouldn't have done too much on Monday and Wednesday to begin with so that Friday they could have still crushed it. But that's an art unto its own, how to nail your training so that you don't have to deload so much and you don't have to do radical things. But that's something we, that takes a lot of years to master. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode by clicking here. <laughs>